I'm Dan Galpin, and this is The Developer Show, your weekly update on the coolest developer news from Google. Last week was the 2021 Android Dev Summit, or ADS, and we announced a lot of stuff. Building for large screens was a big theme at ADS, and to support that, we launched the Android 12L Developer Preview with a more refined UI on large screens, along with more powerful and intuitive multitasking. On 12L, all apps can be used in split-screen mode regardless of whether the apps are resizable. And to help develop for larger screens, we've added adaptive UI patterns in the material design guidelines, new navigation components, window size classes, reference device definitions, a resizable emulator, and activity embedding. The blog has lots more on all of this, and make sure to check out the related sessions in the Developing for Large Screens ADS playlist. Google Play announced that starting January 1st, 2022, the service fee for all subscriptions is decreasing from 30 to 15 percent, and ebooks and on-demand music streaming services will now be eligible for service fees as low as 10 percent. We also announced that the required data safety form is now available, the Play Integrity API and an updated Play Game services are in early access, in-app messaging is coming to Play Billing, and the Play Store listing certificate is here. Learn more on the post. And there are more ADS announcements. We released the first alpha of Jetpack Media 3. We launched the developer preview of Compose for Wear OS, along with the Kotlin Jetpack Watch Face API's beta. We introduced more features on top of Gradle managed devices to help scale your tests across multiple Android virtual devices in parallel, including sharding and slimmer automated test device system images. We launched support for Material U and home screen widgets in Jetpack Compose, updated room support for auto migration and multi map relations, and the 1.0 release of the the Data Store API. Check out the posts and the rest of the ADS content to learn more. The Go language team launched the 2021 Go Developer Survey. If you use Go, used to use Go, or are interested in using Go, please help us shape Go's future by participating in the 10-minute survey by November 16th. We've launched a new open source project for Google Pay that demonstrates the integration process for a range of payment service processors, or PSPs, using their respective APIs and client libraries where applicable. The project uses Node.js and is written in JavaScript, and each of the samples are implemented in a consistent fashion, demonstrating best practices for integrating Google Pay and your preferred PSP with your website or Android application. Head over to the post to learn more. We announced the availability of BigQuery Omni, a multi-cloud analytics service that lets data teams break down data silos by using BigQuery to securely analyze data across clouds. It will be available to all customers on AWS and for select customers on Microsoft Azure during Q4. Learn more, including how to get started with BigQuery Omni, on the post. We are releasing the Go Emotions dataset, a human annotated dataset of 58,000 Reddit comments extracted from popular English language subreddits and labeled with 27 emotion categories, the largest fully annotated English language fine grained emotion dataset to date, along with a detailed tutorial that demonstrates the process of training a neural model architecture using Go Emotions and applying it for the task of suggesting emojis based on conversational text. Head on over to the post to learn more. Check the description box for links to all of today's stories. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, and stay safe. I'm Dan Galpin for The Developer Show. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next week. Make sure to check out the related sessions in developing for large screens ADS playlist.